Hi guys, um, welcome back. Today um, I've got squats and stones. Um, nothing, nothing drastic. I'm going to do a tempo squat today, so it's four to five seconds lower, uh, lowering down. Um, the purpose of that is the fact that obviously I've had a really bad groin all year. I've avoided squatting, and when I do squat, um, and I squat quick, my right side takes over, the same as when I do an Atlas Stone. Um, because of the injury, my right leg's become very dominant. So I want to fix that now, I want to do some tempo squats. Uh, I don't know how heavy I'm going to go, not too heavy, just get a feel for it today and build on that as the weeks go ahead. Um, if I was to squat normally, I would squat down and then my hips would shift because my right leg's so much stronger right now. Um, so that's the purpose of today and that's the purpose of my tempo squatting. And then I'm going to do some Atlas stones. Uh, I'm just going to do stones over yoke today. We just obviously we were recently moving, all these stones are still a bit dirty, so um, I'm just going to take it very easy. The tacky probably won't be too good for a few weeks until they get used a bit more. Um, I'm going to do something that's called a push press drill today as well. I'll show you guys what that is. Um, obviously, I've had problems with my groin, which gives me problems with my knee, and I've not been able to push press as well all year. So I've got this drill that um, I got taught by Tom Hibbert. Thank you, Tom. Um, he taught me to do this to get back into the rhythm of doing it, just like when you walk or when you run, you do things repetitively and it becomes second nature. So I'm going to add these in and hopefully over the next few weeks start putting a bit of weight on the bar as well. Uh, and I'll show you them. And then it's just probably just going to do a couple of accessory bits, some adductor work on the adductor machine. Uh, we'll see how we are for time. I might even throw in some Hercules Hulk today. It's not actually that cold, but um, I've got a thing yeah. about training in too much cold. Right. Because you like good rest periods and I don't often like to get dressed too warm. You can cool down without realising you've cooled down. So. Uh, just want to get it in place. I might turn it on in a bit. If I'm going to do something, squat, deadlift, log, I just warm up with what I'm, what I'm going to lift. Unless I've got a, an issue, then I'll warm up a different way. But at the moment, I'll just warm up squatting. Um, you know, I'm not really tight anywhere. I've just got weakness on my left side that I need to address. So that's all I'm going to focus on. Um, but you know, if I had tight hips, I'd stretch my hips off. If uh, my back was tight, I'd stretch my back off. But, and I'm sure we'll get to that road at some point in the future. But at the minute, I'll just warm up with the heater and the, and the bar, empty bar. I need to, like, I didn't want to miss out on all the contests, so I just knocked squatting on the head, trained everything that I could, trained around it. At least now I can actually do a bit of squatting, if it aggravates it, I can take it easy with other things as well. Um, we've still got four months till the next show. I know that four months will go really quick, but it's not actually four months, it's three months, December, January, yeah, three months. But, you know, um, I'm not really going to get any weaker, but I do need to strengthen this, this issue. The mirror helps, so when 
I try to squat down in the eccentric and try to keep myself completely even. Uh, and I can feel that I'm trying to push hard on my legs so I can stop that. Kilos now. Uh, you know, I've, people that knows me know know how good a squat I am. But like, I've missed it so much. Just hope I can get back squatting again properly. We'll see how this feels. Um, I need to do a set of five on something, so I don't want it to be too heavy. So I'll do a double here, and then we'll see. Just give me something to build on. any young strongman wannabes out there in Morecambe watching that wants to come and load my bar, I'll give you a free gym membership. Because <laughs> it's alright now, but when it gets a bit heavier... That wasn't a dig at your team by the way. <laughs> Three now, I'll do two ten for two. Um, very lightweight for what I'm capable of. You know, sometimes it's good to show this side of us. Uh, you know, people have seen me in powerlifting meet doing four forty. Um, my best on this bar is three eighty in sleeves, and uh, I've done four hundred wraps. So you know, people. We'll probably expect me to chuck in big weights around all year, but you know, like, this will be part of my process to rehab in my groin. I'm actually really pleased how today's going. Um, I don't feel like I'm injured anymore. I've just got a really, really weak side now, and, it, and it, I can feel it when I'm doing this. But it's challenging enough. So, 5 3 2 in the next week, try and increase it, even if I just increase the double, as long as I improve. Give myself four to six weeks and assess, assess it after that really. Um, but yeah, quite happy to be doing 200. You know, for someone that's not squatted for a long time, it's not bad. to do stones after deadlift or squat and usually when I get into my heavier weeks and months I only squat heavy or deadlift heavy once a week so whichever day that is I do my stones after it um, for most of this year it's been like a Tuesday so I'll do heavy deadlift followed by stones on the Tuesday week after heavy squat followed by stones on the Tuesday and that was obviously earlier on in the year when 
I could squat heavy. But hopefully that's how things are going to end up again. Uh, it was a good routine for me. Uh, and that's usually the best day to put stones on. Uh, I've tried doing them on their own day when I've come up and done stones first, it's not easy. If you get a car, I don't get a car. It's into a full conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when I see Tom do it, he just does it like 20 30 times. But for me, it's almost like I try to learn how to walk again. So I do get like a pain stimulus through my knee when I try to stop. It's almost like I need one in the so I'm hoping that just by doing knees as well as starting to squat again, it'll disappear. Um, well, I was quite surprised at that. Like I've not been able to do that for a while. Um, so I'm just going to do it. However, it happens. You know, like as sloppy or as good as it looks. Just do between five and ten reps, and then if it feels really fluent, I'll just try and add a bit of weight. I'm just toying with it really. Um, I just think it'll do me good because you know, there's no point trying to do it with things like logs, axles, dumbbells because you know I've got to do that with pretty good weight and even like the lighter, lighter logs. You know, I can hide a lot of it because of my shoulder strength. So I'm not pressing anything here. This is just all leg power. So just try and get that arithmetic of bending down and thrusting up. So. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. It'll be interesting to see if it works. Um, you know, like I'm going to get back to log pressing next year. I don't want to be struck pressing for the rest of my career. I'll get back to push pressing again. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll do a couple more sets on just the bar and then we'll see if I can put a bit of weight on it. It looks funny. before and then I've tried to, to like ignore it for a very long period of time done three pretty big contests Brian's Europe's Britain's all with this going on um, so now I'm trying to rectify it just try I'm trying a couple of different things in this in this my program I'm writing for myself um, if I don't feel like this is doing anything I'll just stop carry on with everything else but you know I, I want to push press but anyone knows anything about the knee knows it's supported by all the muscles around it and like I haven't been training my quads I haven't been squatting so you know I think the whole knee pain has come from that because I didn't have bad knees before in fact I've never had bad knees in my whole career it's just this year um, so it has to be has to be connected to this injury so you know like even a few weeks of squatting it might help it you know who knows you know, we'll just see how it goes but I just have to squat now I just can't keep not squatting so even if it's just life the foreseeable I have to accept it just keep moving forward you know I don't often get to do stupid exercises but if this thing works it'll be a lot more than a stupid exercise I am a hernia operation in 2016 and I was just starting back training and it was 60 kilo squats and like 120 kilo deadlifts. They were rough times. But it's a part of the process, you know, like it would probably have been nice to document that and show that and show the improvements each week because after four months that's when I competed at Britain's in 2017. And I came third, but like I deadlifted 350 for four. Whereas in all the build up, I, I like I was building up, building up, I got it for two. You know, like, but the process to get to there started from so small. So in my head, that's what's going on today. You know, like, I'm starting here and this is where we're building from. So, and now I get to document it. Um, be nice to look back maybe in six to eight weeks and be like yeah i've come a long way since then so 
I'm feeling very positive about it all. It's just a funny one, isn't it? Like, something that's so simple for one person. I mean, I used to have very good technique with push press. It'll come back. I'm actually really happy with how that's gone. I don't know how the videos look, but that set looked better than the first warm up set. So I feel like I'm reprogramming myself, but I'm reprogramming myself to do it because there is pain, but it's not killing me kind of pain so maybe it's the pain that I need to go through to fix it so it's never going to be anything very heavy um, and then if I come in and I'm doing like even 140 and it's flicking up on my right it's not a bad thing now I can try it and see, see if I can do it on the log and axle and just see how it is can't start the bag a bit anyway but we're going to be starting uh, supplying Evolution Athletics gear to the UK. Uh, obviously, Brian Shaw's company. But these are brand new sleeves. Um, and she needs tight sleeves for competition. So um, they're going to be a pain the first, se first session. Um, it was like that with any of my previous SPD stuff or any old strength shop stuff I got. First few sessions, it always is a bit tight and then they loosen off. So. Uh, it won't be like that next week, I don't think. So how much has your lifting improved since Graham has been coaching you? Uh, went from what? A 240 deadlift to a 300 deadlift. Wow. No, yeah, no suit? In about lifting. six months, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Got powerlifting meet. Same one as Kim. In December, mine's December 18th. Kim's is the 19th. Yeah, yeah so I'm lifting. under 100k. Yeah. No, you don't. You've turned into 110. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm cutting. <laughs> yeah, it might have to be 110. <laughs> yeah. And then what are you? Under what? 64. I just got it wrong. Under 65. 67.5. 67.5. 67.5. But I might have to do under 75. We'll see. <laughs> Taz isn't used to knee wraps. Um, and the twice now is it? Well does once really. Once. But the only times that we've actually wrapped him he's failed to hit depth, scream like a girl. <laughs> Where that um, so what I'm gonna do is wrap how I would normally wrap <laughs> but cut it short, not keep going like I'll do uh, four revs and then I'll cross one and then I'll tie it instead of doing a cross. So basically you count the revs so it's six revs, seven revs with a tie on the eight for Kim. I did normally do the same for him, so I'm gonna do five instead of eight. So he shouldn't find it as difficult. Shouldn't That's the plan it. anyway. Just don't go as tight on the initial one. <coughs> Which goes slightly higher on the first. And Taz is having the training wraps and I'm having the competition wraps. <laughs> it's because you're sweaty. So that's one. Ooh. That's two. These will be better for you. We've got more flex in them. Three. You need a camera on his face, I think. <laughs> so that's four revs. 
I'm sure we said it would be as tight. And then, oh, one across the kneecap. Oh, fuck it up. And this is where it would have got really hard for him. Oh. We're going to let him out, let him off. Ah. See, there's still quite a bit left. <laughs> So these two are doing a, a powerlifting meet in uh, four weeks. Yeah. Maybe less. Three weeks on Saturday or something. So yeah, less than four weeks. Um, but he's not really experienced in knee wraps, so uh, he's had two really bad sessions now. So I've just called it and said, doing sleeves. And then somebody's gonna have to get used to next year. Anyone that knows, knows that they're not nice and they take some getting used to. Um, so it's putting him off his squat, he's squatting actually worse now than the one that they are with the mouth. Up. So he's gonna go with sleeves and hopefully he'll get his sets in. I've never really been a big fan of stoneless, uh, tackleless, sorry. Um, when I used the stoneless steel, uh, I had that in my garage for a couple of years, and obviously you don't use tacky on that, you use like a stick and spray. But I don't know, I just don't like the idea. You know, especially when we can lift such big weights, it's kind of like, right, you've really got to start off from the beginning again um, to be doing something like that. And, I just don't like the idea, I've lost one bicep already, I've got half another bicep, so I don't ever want to do a show without Taki, I, uh, I'd be pretty afraid. <laughs> kind of cooled down a bit but obviously when squatting I don't use my arms very much. If I was deadlifting it'd be a bit easier. So I, I tend to do stone pickups so just dust that's <laughs> on me just from touching it once so they need cleaning so now it's getting colder um, obviously you can see around here I've got all sorts of different tacky the Cerberus the spider tacky but at the moment because it's getting cold this stuff works the best um, it doesn't really 
require much. It looks hard, but then if you pull it out and it gets quite pliable. Even if it was minus five in here, it would still work. So just not great if it's dead warm or getting quite warm. That's when I'll probably jump to other tackies, but um, he does have a hot weather one. I've not used that one yet, so I can't comment. Um, but no, this, this, these three will be my go-tos over the winter. Unless we get some really, 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 really good heating in here, <laughs> which ain't gonna happen. Um, yeah. So thank you, Marcus. I appreciate the tacky because he sent me them for free. I kind of went from saying I was going to do over the yoke to sort of saying, well, I've got this set up now, I might as well do the platform, but they're just really slippy because they're so minging. So I'm going to try and give them a clean for next week. I want to do another set, uh, but I'm not risking it. <laughs> not the way I get injured. So I actually. Um, really like coconut oil, but coconut oil I makes mean, rock hard. So I've got this stuff. I've got bits of stuff. This one's from uh, BTB sleeves. I haven't tried this one yet. What's that one? Taki remover off Marcus. I think they're all similar. They're all basically oil based, so um, I think I can agree, like everyone will probably agree with me, you don't want to, I used to always use WD-40 and Terps, but then your hands stink all night, <laughs> so at least with this stuff your hands smell nice, but uh, you're going to have to get some like towels hanging here so that people can do the tacky removal here, and they're not taking it out into the gym. Yeah, like I'm cleaning my hands now, so at least some of the dirt's come off the stone and it's going to be off. But yeah, the filthy man just makes the whole process stressful. I've not been here long, so I can't, I can't say too much. I'll get him clean for next week. That's, that's our first proper session in the do gym. Um, I just did some tempo squats. Kim and Taz also did monolith squatting with the bar uh, because they've got a contest coming up. I then went on to do, as I described at the start, just some push press drills uh, with a safety squat bar. And then I tried to do some stones, but we had a bit of a malfunction with the stones today. Um, take it as it is, they need cleaning. You know, I've pushed them across a car park um, in the pouring rain. They, uh, they're probably the dirtiest they've ever been, so we need to get the scrapers out, give them a bit of a clean, so I need to clean my balls. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do. So I think Taz is going to help me clean my balls at the weekend. Uh, but yeah, it's been a fun session. Obviously, anywhere new, it's a bit different. You've got to find your feet, but it feels like home now. Um, there's just still stuff that needs doing, still kick to come, there's still DIY that needs doing, but essentially, you know, we can train now and that's the that's the good thing. So me and Kim can get our heads down now and start training. I'm, my next competition is going to be Britain's end of February. Um, 
I'm already starting to think about that, even though it's three months away. You know, give me a couple of weeks of getting going, and I'll start tailoring my, you know, my training around preparing for that, um, which you'll hopefully see if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like the video. Please comment. Ask me any questions. I'll try and answer them. If there's anything you want to see going forward, you know, my wife going in the sea. You know, if there's a few of them, we might be able to convince her going in. You know, uh, but yeah, you know, give us give us some info. You know, we'll uh, we'll try and connect with you as much as possible. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video.